Hello again. Uh, my name is Sanjay Wolski. I'm from RIPE NCC. It, it, it is actually a coincidence because um, um, uh, my, uh, the, the previous presenter was talking about routing policy, and I'll touch a, a little bit about the routing policy, so I don't have to explain that in this presentation at least. Um, so I'm going to be talking about resource public key infrastructure, which is a tool for BGP or region validation. So it's a, a kind of a, a, a big gun uh, I'm pulling off now. Um, so basically, inter-domain routing, and uh, there's not, not much to be said here. Uh, everybody are aware of it. Uh, uh, the previous speaker uh, talked about it as well. Um, but what I like about the, uh, the inter-domain routing and uh, the current uh, EBGP, EGB uh, implementation of it, so uh, a BGP version 4, is that um, it's kind of a gossipy uh, protocol. And uh, the gossip comes from the, the fact that basically the originator says to its neighbors, hey, uh, this is my um, AS number, this is the, the network that I have, and uh, there you go, right? So uh, the receiving part on the other side um, takes this information, turns around, and relates that further to um, its neighbors. Now, the problem with that is that um, um, the BGP as a very, very uh, simple and in some ways a primitive uh, protocol doesn't have any way of validating the statement. Right? So that means that uh, whatever you're going to say to your neighbors, as long as they didn't make any additional actions, uh, they're just going to accept whatever you're going to say. Right? And as the, uh, as the vision how the, 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 the routing uh, looks uh, differs from hop to hop, at any given point on this hop-to-hop -hop, uh, route, uh, the, uh, what is being relayed can be also changed. So the problem is, uh, what's going to happen if somebody's going to tell you a lie? Right? What's going to happen when somebody's going to say that they are announcing the address space that they are not a legitimate holder? All right. So. That's not something that is happening you know, every now and then. That's a situation that is happening every day, every hour, on all kind of places in the, the network. I kind of uh, put the, 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 those routing incidents in kind of three brackets. Uh, the simplest one is just a misconfiguration, right? Uh, four is next to five, five is next to six. If you're typing very quickly the prefix or the AS number that you're going to be announcing from, you can make a mistake. Right. Uh, you have some kind of internal routing policy that leaks out to outside. Happened very often. Right. What you see as a, on the picture is actually Pakistan Telecom um, hijacking YouTube. And they didn't do it because they wanted to do it. They basically had their internal routing policy leaking outside. And the outside peers just accepted that and forwarded that further. Right? So it doesn't happen only to small networks. It happens to uh, huge networks that are well, well protected. Now, um, the, the other part is the, the interesting part, right? where somebody uh, on purpose is trying to hijack your prefix. Right? Uh, this could be done on many reasons. I mean, any reason that you can come up with, with right now is probably valid. Competition. Uh, especially in some markets which are not uh, well protected by the uh, local laws. Uh, for example, betting, which is not possible in many countries in Europe. Uh, those betting uh, companies, for example, are fighting with each other, just announcing their, their uh, address space for the time when there is a big game. Right? If the, the portal where you're betting is down, when you want your money to be, uh, to be paid out, well, the next time, you're not going to bet on, uh, go bet on this side. You're going to go to another one. Uh, you, uh, claiming a new space, and claiming a new space for all kinds of reasons. Uh, you want to have an address space, but for some unknown reason, your, internet, uh, with your original internet uh, registry cannot give it to you, or you want it for a, a particular time, you just can claim it. Right? Uh, there is no a routing police. Uh, there's nobody that's going to start chasing you. There's not going to be a black helicopter landing on the, on the top of your building. Uh, it's just you make a statement, and if somebody will accept it, that's cool. If somebody not, well, you don't have any, uh, uh, you, can't, uh, you, you can't be sure how far your, your, uh, your announcement will go.
Now, but that's used also for uh, temporary solutions, right? Uh, this is used by the flyby spammers, right? They take a slash 24, they take an, an IS number, they start to announce it, send their spam for eight hours, withdrawn. The next day, they're going to take another slash 24 and send their spam, right? So any of those cases, anything that you can come up with is uh, applicable here, and it happens constantly. Right. The last bit is the one which is the creepy one, uh, because there's not much we can do about it. Uh, it was first presented in two no 2009 of, on, on DEF CON, uh, DEF CON by um, two American researchers. And, and basically, the, 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 the title of the, of the presentation, Stealing the Internet, uh, says everything about the presentation itself. Basically, they came up with a solution how to um, attract the traffic, uh, whatever it is in ingress or egress, attract the traffic uh, using BGP, and basically passes it forward to, to its destination so that the source of the traffic and the destination of the traffic is not aware that the, the, uh, the traffic is always taking the same route and somebody is in, um, intercepting the, this traffic and who knows what it does it with it. Right. Um, a couple of years later, about two, three years ago, uh, we had the first cases of this being uh, spotted in the real uh, life. Right. And there was uh, basically uh, two networks, uh, one in Estonia and one in um, Iceland, that were basically uh, hijacking on the short periods of traffic that was going to um, like nuclear facilities, embassies, or um, uh, departments of defense of particular countries. Right, so what you're looking at now is uh, uh, organized groups or maybe even a state back. So what do we can do with it, right? Um, you could say that let's take a snapshot of the current state and let's try to figure out what is it and take it from there, right? To kind of, kind of seal it and, and, uh, and make the next step and try to validate it. Now, uh, the problem with that is that uh, a lot of those BGP relationships uh, cannot be figured out very easily from the global routing table. You c there is no a single database that will tell you who's connecting to whom, and why is that, right? Um, so what what actually uh, operators starts to do that uh, starts to do then? Uh, they started to do all kind of filtering, right? Uh, maximum prefix list is very popular. So basically, you have a downstream and you're saying, hey, you've got a three uh, prefixes. Do not try to announce the fourth one. But that doesn't solve the problem with somebody lies. A static prefix list, that's a better one when you're actually making a, a connection between the prefix and the AS number. But for bigger networks, that's not a solution because if, the, if you have hundreds of maybe uh, thousands uh, of customers, that's just not going, uh, there's too much manual work that is necessary. So what those networks are doing, they are sourcing that from internet routing registry to which I'm going to come back in a second. But in most of the cases, it's unfiltered, unauthenticated. So basically, if I'm skilled enough, I can make an adjacent, um, I can make uh, some kind of adjacent, uh, adjacency with your BGP speaker. All right? It's really uh, creepy. So the case for the origin validation is very simple. Would you like to have a reliable way of uh, you know, uh, making sure that the announcement that you are seeing is authorized by the holder of the address space? Right? Uh, everybody would like to know that. And th there is a system that can tell you that, right? It's called Internet Registry System. Uh, RIPE NCC is a part of this system. There's another four regional internet uh, registries like that. We are not for profit organization. If you want to have an AS number or address space, you come to us, you becoming our member, uh, request uh, a resource, we uh, distribute that resource to you, right? Beautiful. So what happens then on the, on the network side? Right, the, or, or, uh, the, uh, the organization gets the prefix. It starts to talk to their upstream, says, hey, I've got this prefix, um, and I would like to announce that to you. Right? So then the upstream uh, should take this statement and check it with the WHOIS database in one, uh, with one of the regional internet registries. Because when you are requesting an address space from a uh, regional internet registry, we put this information in our WHOIS database. So there's five WHOIS databases that are authoritative uh, in the meaning of who has which address space. But they do not say 
who should announce which address space and uh, which, uh, what kind of preferences, right? Um, the fact that you have a slash 16 or slash 22 doesn't mean that you're actually going to announce it, right? You might de-aggregate at any given point. But the, in, the, in a kind of a principle, the upstream should at least come back to the Whois database and check the statement so that the, the customer is not lying. Right, uh, but that's cumbersome. So we have something. Uh, we have a tools around origin validation. Uh, the basic one and the one who is now kind of a de facto standard is called the Internet Routing Registry. Right database uh, is one of those Internet Routing Registries, and there is a 34 of them in the world. Uh, some of them are better, some of them are worse, some of them have up to date, uh, more up-to-date uh, data, some of them are mirroring each other. They have all kind of different authentication methods and etc. So now, with, within our region, our uh, internet routing registry is very strong because it's tied to the regional internet registry and it's using our um, authentication methods that um, uh, that we uh, build in into the right database to make sure that only the legitimate holder can make the statement. Right? And the statement is basically called a route or route six object. It's an object in a database that you create. And in this object, you glue together the address place plus the um, ASN, which is going to be announcing it. Right? Beautiful. But it comes with the issues. The fact that there's a 34 of those databases is one of them. Um, the other fact, the other problem is that you can make filtering, but you can make a filtering only on your edge, right? This is a, just a database. So now you have to, in some ways, tie it to your routers, right? Whatever they're going to accept from, uh, for example, your uh, customers. You cannot make a, a filtering on a global scale. If somebody is hijacking your prefix, let's say uh, somewhere in uh, South, uh, South America, let's say uh, Uruguay or Venezuela, uh, you, cannot do a, you cannot force any filtering uh, up there. Right? You can talk to those guys to stop announcing your address space, but this is how far you can go. Now, if you want to do even a full filtering, right? Uh, there is 580,000 routes in the, in the global routing table. There is nearly 70,000 ASNs. Hey, put that in a, as a prefix list on your router. At the, the 50,000, uh, maybe 60,000 prefixes, most of the internet routers start to crumble. Right? So you can't really put the whole thing, even if it would be up to date, where in many cases it's not. So the, com the wider community decided, OK, how we can tackle this problem. And the, 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 the idea was, OK, how we can take this idea and uh, move it kind of into a, a 21st century, right, where it's all going to be nicely automated and integrated. And uh, they came up with this idea of putting a PKI infrastructure on the internet, right? So, so basically, it's a, it, uh, um, it has been standardized uh, with ITF, and we have uh, a number of um, RFCs that are covering that. So as I said, it's a PKI infrastructure. It's just it's pretty much a security framework um, that is using uh, regional internet registries as trust anchors in the system. They already have a relationship with uh, the organizations that have the address space and ASNs. They already made a tools available for them to make those statements uh, via internet routing registries. So why don't they uh, going to be the trust anchors in the system? And those uh, trust anchors. Um, basically uh, uh, create uh, certificates, uh, certificate authorities. Uh, they have their own certificates. Uh, now the holder of the address space have their own certificate authority. And with it, this certificate authority on the certificate of the organization itself, it's listed the resources that they have, numeric resources, numeric resources such as ASNs and IP numbers. Now, taking this infrastructure, now the operator can make a statement. And the statement is called route origin, uh, origin authorization. So basically, it's the same idea as with Internet Routing Registry. You glue together the AS number and the address space. Uh, this is not new in any way. I'm not to uh, um, talking about science fiction. Uh, this is already ongoing. This is something that 
uh, we've been working for a good 10 years. You know, it, it's like any of those technologies that's trying to uptake, uh, that, that's trying to be integrated in our internet infrastructure, right? Um, IPv6, 19 years, DNSSEC, 15 years. This is about 10 years, though, in, in workings. Since 2011, we are actually in production. Uh, we are in production, and all of the other regional internet registries are in production of this, with this system as well. Um, in principle, it has those two models that you can deploy. It's, there is a delegated model and hosted model. In the delegated model, we have the trust anchors. We have our self-signed certificate. We have a, a, a pair of, of keys. Uh, you create your own certificate authority. You create your own pair of keys. Uh, and we basically sign your certificate to establish a chain of trust. Now, what we've realized when we started to do this, uh, that out of our 13,000 um, members that we have nearly, only one organization was interested in running it. <laughs> Basically, most of the organizations didn't want to get bothered by running a PKI infrastructure. Most of the operators weren't capable even of running that. So we focused on the hosted model. And the hosted model basically dumps down the whole PKI infrastructure so that everything related to the PKI, everything related to the crypto, is pretty much not even visible. Uh, we taking care of that, right? So not only that we run the certificate authority for the trust anchor, but we all we run also the certificate authorities for the operators itself, and we give we give them a place so that they can focus on the single thing, creating those ROAS. All right, so that's going to be hard. Um, so yeah, uh, creating those ROAS. We have uh, a form which is basically going into, uh, you have to fill out the form with three places, IS number, prefix, and how far are you willing to de-aggregate it. So uh, within, the uh, within the LIR portal, there's basically an interface where you can say, hey, uh, could you create a ROA for uh, those BGP announcements that my network is currently making? That's it. Uh, when you make those, uh, those statements, those ROA, you click publish. And uh, the, the raw together with uh, your certificate, your public keys, and so is being sent to the, to the publication point. So the publication point, all the original internet registry have their own publications point, and uh, you run on in, within your infrastructure a software called Validator, which is basically pulling the, the public part of the PKI crypto and uh, crunches through the numbers. And it generates something which is called a validated cache. So basically, all the ROAs that make sense, cryptographically speaking. So they haven't been invoked, uh, revoked, uh, they haven't been tempered, etc. The validator has all the knobs. Right? You can create ROAs, remove ROAs, etc. And it notifies the RPKI-aware uh, router that, say that uh, there is a new validated cache for him. Right? The router grabs this validated cache and now he can start to make a comparison between the BGP announcement that he sees and the, uh, the, the ROAS that have been received from the validator. Now the, result can be, the, the results can be just three, right? This could be an unknown. Hey, I see a BGP announcement, but I don't see a covering ROA. Uh, it could be invalid. I see an announcement, but uh, it doesn't reflect the ROA. So AS number is different, or the size is different, or valid, so that they match. So now, with this information, uh, the, the, the router can make, or pretty much operator, can make a routing decision. Right? He can drop an announcement which is fraudulent, or at least it doesn't match the, uh, the raw. Or, for example, as it happens, uh, as we are in kind of uh, the uptake of this uh, system, you just basically change the preference. Right? And this is the most popular uh, approach uh, nowadays. But in the future, we hope to, to uh, cover the, the, the whole internet space. So where is it in, uh, in the meaning of, of the routers? Um, it's an ITF standard. Both protocols, RPKI and RPKI RTR, has been implemented in uh, most of the uh, big players, right? And uh, most of the open source implementation. Uh, Quagga is not that uh, developed anymore. Um, so there is, a pre uh, there is a kind of a proxy uh, that it's using, which is called uh, BGP SRX. BIRD's got a su support for ROAS, but it doesn't have a support for RTR. Uh, but there's a, a separate reason uh, for that. So why should you care? Well, your traffic can be intercepted, uh, anything can be done with it, and there's absolutely you, uh, nothing that you can do about it. Um, 
it's um, it's kind of okay if you have a, a, a national service that you provide here in, uh, in Serbia and you've been hijacked, let's say, in the uh, kind of far east of Russia. Um, if you're going to uh, de-aggregate your, uh, your announcement, you're going to be fine here locally. Um, but every time that you're running anything that is critical, uh, critical infrastructure in the meaning of critical infrastructure of the country, critical infrastructure in the meaning of financial uh, services or anything like that, you should be worried uh, that any traffic that you're sending, you cannot say where it actually goes and how it's being passed and what it's uh, actually being done with it. So, uh, said that, uh, thank you very much for your time. It's uh, 15 minutes, so it's really hard to make, uh, uh, to say a, a lot of about this, but uh, if you have any questions, I'm open for the questions and you can catch me in the, in the break.